I have a story that is a true story, more or less. Late last night when we were all in bed, old Mrs. O'Leary took a lantern to the shed. Cow tipped it over and winked her eye and said, there'll be a hot time in old town tonight. Fire, 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 hot, 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 fire, 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 hot, hot, hot. Oh, that song was going around and around and around in my head. Hot, hot, hot. I don't know if you know this. That's supposed to be about the Chicago fire, the great Chicago fire. Mrs. O'Leary and her cow were cleared of all wrongdoing. That was a story made up in whole cloth as fake news by a couple of journalists who didn't find the fire sensational enough. But that song, <laughs> That song, I was looking for the lyricist. And guess who it is? Anonymous children all across the United States. <laughs> there was no lyric about Mrs. O'Leary and her cow until kids in camp and at schools started teaching it to each other. That may be why if you know that song, you have slightly different lyrics in your head. But that's another story altogether. <laughs> I was about mm, 21 and I was in my boyfriend's car. I had only been my boyfriend for a couple of months. It was a little Toyota truck and the worst heat wave that had ever hit the Eastern seaboard smacked into Western Massachusetts and New England with no warning. And we were driving down to see his grandmother, for me to meet his grandmother in Connecticut from Western Mass on this incredibly hot day. And all I could hear was fire, 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 hot, 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 as I started to die of heat exhaustion. My, my face was getting redder and redder as we were heading down south. Uh, my boyfriend kept giving me sidelong glances. Are you okay? No, I'm gonna die. I know I'm gonna die. Uh, well, we have to stop and get gas. So I snuck into the mini mart. <laughs> tech refuge in the air conditioning. I bought lots and lots of salty snacks because you know that's how you prevent heat exhaustion, right? Or at least that's what my 21 year old brain thought and an RC cola. And then I saw it, my salvation, the ice chest, bags of ice for sale for $1.98. And I had $2 in my pocket. I ran over to the freezer and got out that bag, paid the man and rushed out to the truck into the heat. As I climbed in, my boyfriend said, uh, we don't have a cooler. I know, I'm gonna wear this on my head. And I suited my actions to my words. Oh. The sweater that my hair had been knitted over my, my scalp started to cool down and my brain started functioning again. Huh. This was perfect. After we'd gone down the road a little bit further, I, I cradled that bag in my arms on my lap. Oh, now the rest of me could start to cool down. This was even better than functioning air conditioning. And I started to think about his grandmother and Westport. I, I hadn't met any of his family before. His mother had come up to visit um, him in, in Northampton in Massachusetts 
and I had met her then, but not any of the rest of the family. One of the things that I really liked about this particular guy was that he had called his grandmother and it wasn't even her birthday or Mother's Day or anything. And naturally, I'm sure it was either in an evening or a weekend because this was back in the days when that was a consideration for making a phone call. <laughs> you didn't have a cell phone and you could call London. You thought, oh, wait a minute. Is it after 11 o'clock? Is it the weekend? Can I afford to call all the way down to Connecticut? It's out of state. And he had called her. I hadn't called my grandparents like that. It seemed very special to me. And now I was going to get to meet that lady. Westport. What did I know about Westport? Oh, that's right. Uh, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, they had a theater there. Oh, that's right. Lots of really rich and well-known people lived there. Um, what did you tell me was your grandma's name? Oh, Maddie. <laughs> Their house is called Nadnal. You're going to really like it. Their house has a name. I was just a kid from Western New York. I, I'd never been in a house with a name before. Now I started to really worry. I remembered that his grandmother had been referred to as a matriarch. It seemed a little intimidating because I was holding on to that bag of ice and it was getting smaller and smaller and smaller as we got closer and closer to Westport. I started to worry just a little bit. I'm sure it'll be fine. By the time we got to the long driveway and pulled up to the beautiful house, it was just a bag of cold water that I was cradling. And I was um, maybe just a little soaking wet. I got out of the car and his grandmother came over to meet us. Oh, it was a beautiful house. Two stories. My boyfriend said, yeah, there's two decks that look out over the pond. The pond. The house has a pond. Oh, <laughs> pleased to meet you. Right away, she tried to order her grandson around. There were lots of things that needed fixing and he should go right into the house and get started on the fence and the light bulbs that needed to be changed. And she had a whole list. What a great guy looking after his grandmother like that. And you, she said, I have a lot of weeds down that driveway. Would you go out and weed those? Well, my mom and dad had raised a very good kid. Sh sure. I went out back from under the shade of the trees, the hot, hot sun, and started weeding down that long gravel driveway. Oh, man, more weeds, more weeds, more weeds. I just kept pulling and pulling until I was just about delirious. No more weeds. I turned around and walked all the way back up the gravel driveway and, and there was my boyfriend with his grandmother just sitting underneath the shade of the trees, just starting to pour lemonade for each other. And immediately he poured one for me and brought it over. Oh, the shade, the lemonade, I sat down, started to feel really good. We had a great time. We had dinner. It was really, really nice. There were a few names dropped. Moss Hart, famous ad man in New York City. Uh, his grandfather had been the inventor of Father's Day, as near as I could tell. But I tried not to be too intimidated. And then when it was time to leave, my boyfriend went back in the house to clean up and take care of all the dishes and his grandmother turned to me again. So, she said, when are you gonna marry my grandson? I couldn't breathe. 
I was so young. I, I just, we'd only been seeing each other for, for a few months. He was only my second boyfriend. Um, um, I, I don't know, <laughs> she said. Well, I think you're a keeper. I couldn't even tell my boyfriend until we were almost all the way back home. Your grandmother asked me when I was going to marry you. And he started to laugh. That explains why she had you do the weeding. You see, this particular matriarch, when she was raising her two girls at home, my boyfriend's mother and her sister, she would have any bows that came around do chores around the house. And however well they did them, that's how they rated in their girlfriend's mother's esteem. I heard that his uncle had had to fix the roof and his father had had to muck out that pond until it was suitable for swimming. I think I got off pretty easy with weeding the driveway. <laughs> but I thought, that's pretty silly to think that you could tell who was gonna marry your daughters or your grandson by how well they performed the chores. It wasn't until six months later that we were engaged. And last 4th of July, we celebrated 34 years together. Maybe his grandmother knew what she was talking about after all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>